Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Men of Ann Arbor podcast brought to you by the good folks at New Amendment. I'm Stuart Douglas, along with Nick Stauskas. Nick, man, what's going on? How are the holidays treating you? Holidays were great. A lot of good food, a lot of good presents. Family came in, right? Family came into town, got to first Christmas with the baby, so can't complain, man. It was all good. How about you? Good, good. I'm currently in French Lake, Indiana, in the middle of a family vacation. I love it. I am not going to lie to you. I'm looking forward to January 1 when this is all over. I think we thought this year we're going to do like no presents and just do a family vacation, get away. And it's been great. But then like that third day comes around and you've been at the casino late for two nights in a row. It's not really uh, the best, the best feeling in the world. You're ready to go home. But yeah, it's uh, not quite having a baby. Hey, casino didn't treat you too well this time? No, it's not been bad. It was hilarious. Last night, Chelsea, my wife, got up. She gets on the roulette machine. She just disappeared for like 20 minutes. Goes to the roulette machine and just playing like $15 hands and gets up to like 360. And then I walk over and she's down to 90. And she's like, I thought I would win it all back. I'm like, no, you got you to gotta learn to walk away. Yeah, like, I've been there too many times. You really got to just figure it out and learn to walk away. Yeah, that's how they get you, man. You gotta, you gotta like limit yourself, like thirty minutes, forty five minutes, and then you just gotta get out. You gotta dart for the exit, cash out. Yeah, you don't, especially you don't want to ruin a family holiday. I've been with some guys where they just will sit there for hours, and they're just down and down and down. And I'm like, that's the last thing I want to do. I'm just, I want to avoid that at all costs. Especially at this time of year where you're already, you're already down because you're spending on presents and you know yep. you're getting everyone gifts. You're like, ah. Bank account's looking rough. But. No, it looks terrible. Yeah, yeah, it's the last thing I want. Yeah, I took out like I like I had a hundred dollar limit on myself. I'm just playing like one dollar hands. It's taking like two hours to win like thirty bucks, but it's thirty bucks, so I'm fine with it. Yeah, win what you can, man. It's their money. Yep, yep. I want to get into our X's and O's segment and recap the last couple of games. They had a win against Lipscomb, which is a little scary there at the end. And then the UNC game, 80 to 76 loss, um, you know, Lipscomb. We're, to be honest with you, we're going to talk more about UNC, but we're going to talk about this team as a whole and how they've looked, you know, the new look since Doug has taken over point guard and, and everything that we've been discussing in the last episode or two. Lipscomb was tough. Um, it was tight at the end. It was like 64-63. Lipscomb got it there close. And then Doug really stepped up at the end. They pulled away. Guys made clutch plays, but I just think there was something left to be desired there. I mean, Lipscomb isn't a bad team, but, you know, like you said before, you got to put these teams away. Like, you got to put them out of their misery. And coming off, you know, some question marks with Doug running the point now, I think it was kind of um, maybe a little bit of a confidence shaker. I don't know how you feel about it. Yeah, I mean, for Doug, you know, for Doug specifically, you know, you love to see him make some big plays down the stretch. He had that floater in the lane and then a little pull up jumper, um, you know, clutch plays to kind of seal the deal for them. But yeah, I mean, especially at home against a team like Lipscomb, like you can't you can't be messing around with those games and being down, you know, a couple points with, you know, with minutes left to play. Um, you know, these are games that you should be trying to put away in the first half and you know, using those last five to 10 minutes of the game to get, you know, guys on the bench some minutes and, you know, get some rest for your starters. But yeah. I just feel like this year they haven't really, you know, whether they're playing great teams or bad teams, I kind of just feel like they've been playing to the level of competition. Um, and I don't know, maybe you feel it differently, but, and again, it's the same thing with like UNC or like Virginia or Kentucky. It's like, they're close you know, they're keeping the game closer, but they're not getting over the hump. And then it's like these games that they should be winning, they're winning them, but they're like, they're close games. Uh, they can't win anything decisively. So, um, you know, if we, you know, speaking of X's and O's, you want to get into the the reasons why, you know, the one, the one thing for me that stands out is like offensively, you look at them at this team and they're one of the best in the country at not turning over the ball. So they yeah. take, they take good care of the ball. They're getting shots up. You know, they got one of the best players in the country in Hunter. They got, you know, good supporting players. But, you know, we spoke about it last episode. Like, this this ball screen defense is – it's it's horrendous right now. Yeah. And I actually – I didn't realize this. I read it the other day that they, they're giving up more points per game out of the ball screen than any other team in the country. 
And I don't know. It's, it's, it's not. It's it's honestly not surprising because when you look, when you look at the way they are executing their coverages, there is absolutely no consistency with what they're doing. It's no. it's almost like everyone's doing their own thing and just like hoping that they stop someone. Um, and there's just a number of instances in the Lipscomb game and UNC game where, again, you're just shaking your head and you're like, you know, they're doing so many good things offensively. And guys like Kobe and Doug, they're making, you know, really good jumps for leaps forward uh, in terms of their offensive play. But they just they dig themselves into these holes with just giving up easy baskets and almost all of them are out of the pick and roll. Yeah. And it's in a variety of ways that I've seen. There's instances and particularly in the UNC game where I was taking notes of it where there's a couple of times where Jet is guarding the opposite corner and the ball yeah. is on the, the, uh, the opposite wing from him and he's not even in the paint, like not even in the paint to yeah. help on that roll man coming straight down the middle from the top of the key. Yeah. I was like, that's an easy one, especially six, seven, like just get a hand there. And it's, yeah. you really can just deter everything. But, you know, we're slouched over, we're tired, our hands are down. And we're playing, we look, we're like at, at six foot tall with our hands down and not even in the paint. I mean, you you're, you're, might as well not even be out there. And then a couple of times, Terrace had one, um, Hunter had another where they're rolling back or they're, they're like recovering back from a soft hedge. It wasn't like a complete drop back, but a little bit of a soft hedge. And then they just turn around and they have their backs to the ball and their hands are down. And then there's just a little bounce pass right past them or, you know, a little chest pass, whatever it is, right past them for a layup. And, like, just little things like that. Like, you got to recover back into the pass lane with your hands and be aware of where the ball is. Like, you can't always expect help everywhere. So, it's just like they're getting beat in a lot of ways on the ball screen, which is a little concerning, to say the least. I mean, it yeah. is. It's, a, it's, it's the biggest concern they have because of what you said. That's that. It's just – that's wild. I mean, you just can't have it. And, and the, for me, the telltale sign that they're struggling with it is – how many different coverages they throw out there. Like, you know, they'll go zone, then they'll go, they'll play a drop, then they'll play like a soft hedge and they'll do a hard show. And again, it puts the weak side in a tough position because when you, when you don't have a consistent coverage that you're going to, you know, it's one thing we talked about, like the guy guarding the ball and the the guy guarding the screener, you know, you got to call it out and then you got to communicate the coverage. But for the guys on the weak side, like they need to be knowing what's going on is it a hard show or is it a drop or whatever because that's going to affect what position you are are in on the weak side for example if it's a hard show and i'm jet howard and i'm guarding the weak side you got to pull all the way over like you got to pull all forget about your he's not the ball handler is never going to be able to throw a cross court pass to the corner on a hard show so you have to pull over and protect the basket now, if the if if they're playing in a drop, if you're jet, now you have some you have the time and you can be patient and kind of stay with your man more in the corner. You don't need to come all the way into the paint. But you can see there's just this struggle between all these guys for like a cons- to find a consistent coverage that works. And I think in turn it's messing them up even more because no one's really sure of what they're going to do. And um, yeah, it's, it's frustrating because again, you, you see guys making making good strides on the offensive ends. You know, specifically Kobe, Jet, Doug, and and you know, you want to like celebrate those things, but then you yeah. know they keep coming up with these with these tough losses, and you know, it's it, that's kind of the thing that just it's blatant. It just it it's 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 so obvious watching these games, and it's hard to to ignore that fact. Beeline always had it. Describe like you are connected at the hip with a string to all of your teammates. Mm-hmm. Like you would do that five out shell drill. Sure. And it was boring and monotonous as hell. And, but you got the drift that you need to be reacting to your teammates. So if mm-hmm. like Hunter is hedging out, you got to just be reactive to it. Like, that, you know, yeah. now it, they're in a tough spot here because they don't know, they don't, not comfortable with all the coverages. And they're kind of limited in how what they can teach these guys and then, you know, what they're going to hang on to and retain and do well with. You're not really sure it's going to change game to game. But like at the bottom, at the end of the day, like you have to react to your teammates, yeah. you know, one by one by one. It goes down the line. Like you're my, my teammates to so my strong left helps. So then I got to go over on the string and the person next to me has got to pull over. So they're just not doing that at all. I don't know if it's. I think it's combo, right? It's basketball. It's a combination of everything always. So it's youth and being tired 
and you know good playing against good competition Mm -hmm. um but i mean that is that's got to be the one thing that they're just hammering away in film like you said that it's they're they're kind of hamped up like i don't even know what you do as a coach because they're trying to simplify certain things but then you know you're playing rj davis is different from um, you know another point guard who can't shoot as well so you have to play different coverages so it's like what do i do you're 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 just yeah. it's a state of confusion as a coach like I don't, I don't envy that position say the least yeah and and there was a couple of different plays that stood out to me in the unc game too and i think a couple of times it was it was kobe and doug who are guarding the ball and they're about to get screened and whether it was terrace or hunter you know i don't again i don't think they're in a hard show it was kind of they're more at the level of the screen and you can see these guys like Kobe and Doug, they like, you know, if you're getting screened and you're and the the big is at the level or a hard show, you need to go over that. You need to fight over that screen yeah. while the big kind of is there buying you some time. And then you need to go under the show guy to then square back up to the ball. And there are so many times where Doug and Kobe are just going under everything. They're like, but like there's a hesitation. They're like going to go over. And then they, they realize they're going to get hit. And so then they go under, but then they go under like Hunter as well. And then it's like, it kind of leaves Hunter or Terrace or any of these guys in a hard you know situation because now, you know, they can't run back to the paint to go get their guy. They can't recover to their guy. They're kind of like guarding the ball and they're not really sure if someone's going to recover to them. Um, and again, that's where you can see there's just, there's a genuine confusion as to how they're going to, to guard these, these, these situations. And I think on that last play where UNC, where UNC scored that floater, that's exactly what happened. And they, and the play ended in an all out scramble because they couldn't square up the ball. So the big was, you know, stuck on the ball. Then they pass it. The big's trying to recover to the basket and the guards are trying to match back up. And it was just, it's chaos that leads to like a pretty much wide open, you know, five or six foot floater. And uh, again, those are the plays that are killing them. And it's 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 criminal because they've done enough good things offensively to 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 give them a chance to win these games. And it's just the the simple X's and O's of the of the pick and roll of guarding the pick and roll that's kind of holding them back at this point. Yeah, it's um, the that play you talked about where they're scrambling and. Uh, Doug wanted it like switched and it was on the big and then Hunter was trying to recover back to the big and then uh, RJ was wide open and Kobe was in the corner right there like a couple slides away like a a couple sprint steps away that's the kind of stuff that you need we're like okay this is chaos something's happening I'm right here I'm gonna go recover and instead he was too late and then got pump faked out of his shoes and then got the open layup and if you're, you know, if you're just that much more uh, experienced with it, you're already there. Like you're already yeah. guarding two people because he had the ability. He had his guy in the corner and then RJ was wide open on the wing, but they were supposed to have to like kind of stay in between and then be able to recover to RJ when the, the ball got back to him and then have Doug come out to his man in the corner. So and I'm over explaining it, but it, it's just like the little things where, you know, that makes a huge difference. And that's, I mean, that's experience. Like I, I wasn't really super great at it until junior year probably mm-hmm. I mean, we, we we preached that a lot i mean we were more of a defensive focused team than we were offense like you know, this team is more offensive focused because of their talent so it's a little different than what i went through but that stuff, that stuff just takes time it'll take time yeah. and we'll see if they get to it um this year but obviously like you said that stat is alarming and it is their biggest concern far and away and We'll see what the coaches have comes up with. I mean, it's just going to take some time for these guys to figure it out. But I, I want where I'm transitioning into, and I think it starts with, is Hunter in a lot of ways and his activity on the defensive end. But just the tone that he's setting or should be setting as a leader, and he hasn't been the last couple of games. I mean, yeah. Lipscomb was fine. I think he still should be getting more touches and more shot attempts. But we saw in the Kentucky game, the aggression wasn't there. And then – uh, Armand Baycott just, I mean, took it to Hunter. And to me, yeah. it was, that was the biggest difference in the game. And, you know, I thought Michigan defended the guards pretty well. Like the guards didn't shoot super great. They had some open layups that I didn't like, but yeah, to me, it came down to Armand winning that battle and winning that battle pretty big. It was, it was 
it, that was like a it was domination. You know, yeah. I hate to say it, but he he got dominated that game. And um, you know, it's well, too, and I, I'm a fan of Hunter, but it's like the one reason why I'm like a little skeptical of him at the next of you know in the NBA at the next level is because you know when he's met with someone with the same size and strength down low, like you could see he just, you know, he struggled to, you know, get that low post position, get those touches that he was used to having and, you know, easily being able to finish over the top. He just, you know, he wasn't having that same success. And again, in college, like, you know, there's very few guys that are that big, that strong, but, you know, you move forward to the NBA and, you know, you go up against the all Americans like he did against UNC, you yeah. know, you're going to have, you're going to, you're going to run into some guys who are just as big, just as strong as you. And I think that was, again, like you said, that was the difference in that game because, you know, you look at jet, you look at um, Kobe and, and those guys sure did enough. They did plenty to, to put that team in position to win. And, you know, really the only thing that was missing was, was the scoring from Hunter and um, just wasn't there. It was like the way he wasn't scoring. Like the way that Baycott was forcing him out and pushing him yeah. out. And then, I mean, to me, I just picture Hunter being like a dominant force. And if a, and a dominant force should be demanding the ball. And then no matter who is in front of you, and you, you shouldn't be facing up from 15 feet all the time like he was against Kentucky. Like he did a better job of not doing that against UNC. But even then, he still like wasn't demanding touches really wasn't getting him. And I know that they have have a focus on, you know, a lot of these pin down sets, which is ironic. It's a very beeline offense looking like right now. No, I and, know. And I'm like, okay, you know, the, this, I've been talking for like months now about like, you got to get the guards going, especially since Doug took over. Like, all right, let's get the guards going. Yeah. Uh, you know, they got to be there at the end. They're going to have to make plays in the tournament to win tournament games, win Big Ten games, whatever it may be. But now I'm back to – get Hunter the ball. Like we got, we got now we got to readjust. And we got to get Hunter the ball again, but it's uh, kind of sucks for guys like Kobe and jet who've been very consistent. I mean, Kobe's had back to back 22 point games and I think averaging like over 18 in the last three or four or something like that, but like just playing really well and really efficient and using those pin downs really well. Yeah. Um, but I mean, to me, it's, you know, it just comes down to Hunter. Once again, yeah. it's like, you know, we'll I'll, we'll take for granted Kobe or Jet in the next couple games if you know, you know we're not giving them the ball enough. But I really do think to win these games, like you're going to have to have Hunter beat Hunter like he was all last year at the end of the year. So I I don't know what you do exactly. I think you just, I mean, am I wrong in just saying like, all right, we're just going to Hunter now, like like every third or fourth possession. Yeah, yeah, and no, I think it's I think it's very I think it's very fair that you know they have. Just place in that rule. Like, Juwan should be like every yeah. third or fourth possession in the half court. Like, if we're playing a slow game in the half court, every third or fourth possession, we're going down to him and we'll let him work. Cause you also, you trust Hunter to make the right play. Like, he's not going to force, he's not going to force up some, you know, yeah. bad shot and just be like, I'm going to get mine. Like, he is a gifted passer. He's a smart player and he's, you got to trust him. He's going to make the right reads. Um, but at the same time, like to your point, I, I love the offense that they have been running for the guards, especially like uh, in the Lipscomb game. Like you started seeing like Coach Beeline would have the rocket pistol action, mm -hmm. which was for um, which basically the guard coming down uh, on the on the left wing dribble handoff with, you know, whether it's Tim Hardaway or myself or, you know, you, uh, Zach Novak. And then following that dribble handoff, the big runs into a screen and then you just kind of, you know, you either get a pull up jumper or you get all the way downhill. And they started running that for Jet. And especially when teams are in are playing in a drop, which I feel like a lot of Big Ten teams will. Yeah. I feel like you got to run that and run that and run that because Jet is so first of all, he is he's a good playmaker as well. Like he will make the right pass. But if teams are playing in a drop, he just has that ability to score in the mid range. He has the size to go to the rim and he has the range to kind of like, if anyone goes under those screens to kind of like, you've seen him kind of get the ball and pop back for a little, for a, uh, for a little step back three. Yeah. And again, I love the action that they've been running for him and, and same with Kobe too. Like Kobe has, he's looking like a legit three level score, like get into the rim, mid range threes, and we've been on him kind of, we've been harping on him about he hasn't been hitting shots. Like he's been doing the right things, 
the ball just hasn't been going in. And then finally, these last two games, you've kind of seen it come together where the jumper is falling and then the confidence comes with that. And now it's like, okay, I can, I have everything on the table. Like, what do I, what am I, what do I want this possession? And again, it was a beautiful thing to see. I'm, I'm happy for him because I know he struggled a little bit to start the year, but the guard play has been a lot better in my opinion. Yeah. Um, it looked a lot better at least. Um, so, you know, there, again, don't, we, we said we don't want to come in here and be like all negative about this team. No. It's hard. It's hard to be all positive when they're losing these games that they should be winning. But the positive of it is some of these guys are making really solid improvements and they're looking a lot more confident out there. Yeah, it's I mean, it's right there, right? You couple the guard play and Doug can kind of settle into his role and be a little more efficient. And then you have Hunter step up. I mean, it's right. You're right there for the makings of a really good team. Now, the bench is a, another subject uh, because there was some issues there with Hunter getting in foul trouble mm-hmm. and a, just a dumb tech. I mean, just stupid. It's something you just can't be doing. Just, I mean, it wasn't even worth it. Like he didn't even like get like a good shot in on anybody. It was just he kicked. No. He kicked yeah. Caleb Love basically. He got in like the world's worst hold me back fight ever. It was terrible. Oh, it was terrible. No one wanted any part of that. No, so yeah, it wasn't even like a good chest to chest. I don't man. know. It was odd. Um, and so, but it's it's there. It's it, it's it's right there. Offensive. I mean, Leaky Black, one of the best defenders in the nation. I think. Yeah, I, that's not my words. Everybody's been saying that. But I mean, he can even handle Kobe coming off the pin downs, yeah. and getting into his left hand. I mean, Kobe got to the rim twice for a layup with his yeah. left hand. So the, those those plays are looking really good. Like they're running good sets, and then they'll couple it with kind of looking at each other. I think I wanted to. I tweeted this during the game, and I want to make this point again. Because people were talking about like Doug taking over the role and, you know, being worried about his shooting and efficiency, whatever it may be. But I was like, all right, well, at the point guard level, like he's at least going to be more aggressive than Jalen was. Yeah. And you just need to be aggressive right now and like figure out the rest later. And they still like, I think in the second half, their offense was not aggressive whatsoever. They were just kind of looking at each other a little bit. And Joey Baker got in the game, and Joey was very precise with what he was doing. Yeah. He was like, I'm going to attack. Like, the first play I think he had, just a big play that he had was a shot fake, and he drove all the way to the basket for a layup. And, like, mm-hmm. you know, it's always, well, Joey didn't do that. At, did, well, I mean, he's a basketball player. Like, he's obviously yeah. capable. And But he was just – he came out aggressive. He was ready to go. And I think a little bit of his uh, of it is him being pissed off for not playing a lot of minutes lately in the past. Well, basically all year has kind of been up and down. But I mean, I even liked the transition three he took. Like you, you knew he caught the rebound mm-hmm. at the uh, UNC's free throw line, and he started dribbling. He got to half court, and I'm like, everyone knows, everyone in the whole yeah. arena knows this is going up from three. And like, who yeah. cares? Like they, they need something. Mm-hmm. And Jed ended up tipping it in, and it worked out. Um, so it looked good. But like, even if that didn't work out, I'm like, fine. Like somebody just be aggressive and get a shot up because there's times I don't know what it is. Like if they're getting tired and they're just kind of looking at each other they're not running sets super well but there's just like these lulls where i think you could just easily plug and play boom 100 post-ups all right we've got three possessions in a row now run fist but i don't know what it is whatever you want to call and just hunter just post up like mm-hmm. something that easy and like good luck stopping it i think even with bacon on, on him they had the double team yeah so i think that's easy to plug and play there but again like it was just these lulls offensively, but they're they're getting close. I I'm, I am gonna remain positive. That was a bit negative spiel right there, but yeah, I I think they are doing some things well there, um, and I don't have too much more I want to see like new. I just kind of want to see maybe more post ups from Hunter, like more demanding it. We're gonna like really yeah. just part of our game plan. We're gonna understand what they want to double team, and you know, basically just keep developing what you've been doing the last few games, I think. I mean, I don't know if you see anything drastically offensively that you want to change. No, no. I think I think they, they've been making good strides on the offensive end, um, you know, and specifically the team shooting better. You know, it's just it's a simple thing. Like, they're making more shots. And yeah, having, awesome. guys like, having guys like Joey come in and be aggressive is huge, too, because we've acknowledged the bench. The bench like, they, they just don't have bench scoring. They haven't had consistent bench scoring all year. So... You know, if the one thing they, you know, could improve offensively, it, it would be that, you know, having guys come in and, and give them a boost of some sort. But 
I agree with you. Like if, if, if things are getting stagnant and you kind of feel that lull in the offense, perfect opportunity, Hunter, get in the post, throw it into him, go to work, you yeah. know, simple, simple, simple solution. Other than that though, I, you know, I, I love, I love just because Doug has taken over as point guard doesn't mean he has to be in the ball screen every time. Like right. don't get me wrong. He, he's great in the ball screen and he's, you know, electric, exciting, can get to the rim, can make some plays, but that's the beauty of having Jet and Kobe too. Is like you can Doug doesn't have to carry that whole role himself. Is you can start going to those rocket pistol actions on the wings on either side, so Kobe can get to his left hand coming from the right side, or Jet can get to his right hand coming from the left side. And um, you know, hopefully they they hopefully they see the coaches see the success they've had with those kind of actions, and they continue to run it. Yeah, I think the more comfortable Doug gets, he'll be able to kind of get into that quick. I mean, I, I played on both sides of it where we won my freshman year with walk-on point guards who just ran the offense, and we ran it through Manny and PD. Yeah. And, you know, the, the majority of the offense came through that. And then, you know, I played with Don Ball, Dominic, Darius Morris, and Trey Burke. So you can do both. Like, mm-hmm. Doug, where Doug's at is he's got to figure out, you know, what's what game – is best for him to be a little more aggressive and then what's not. And that that's a whole other subject. I mean, that that's just going to take a long time to figure out. But if they can make it a focus, like, all right, Doug, you see Jet's got it going or Kobe's got it going. Like, let's get into this quick. Use your aggressiveness yeah. to get into things quick, not only just for yourself. So, yeah, I think that's that's a good point. I think if they do that more, yeah. just be precise, right? Like, as soon as they're precise, they're really good. Yeah. No, and 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 you you mentioned a good point guard too. It's it's not just about you know going on the floor and and making the right reads. It's seeing you know evaluating what is happening that game yep. and acknowledging sometimes that it's not your game. It might be someone else's game. And you know I've had a couple point guards. One in particular that stands out to me is our boy Evan Turner. When I played with Evan Turner in Portland, anytime I had it going during a free throw, he'd come and be like yo, what action you want me to run? Yeah. And like, you know, he sees me make a couple shots and then he comes to me, what, what, what play you want me to run? Like, let me get you a shot. Yep. And like, those are point guards that obviously they have the ability, but then they're also, they're thinking the game up here. And Doug, you know, as he's early on, he's a freshman. So, you know, things are moving a million miles a minute. But once that game slows down, you can start thinking and, and it, a whole another universe opens up for you. So hopefully Doug can, yeah. can kind of start seeing it, those. Things. It helps when you get the big check for the game to slow down for you a little bit and focus on little people. Yeah, yeah, you got dollar signs. Uh, and that definitely helps you be uh, less selfish, I think, at yeah. times. You know, it depends on who you are. But uh, yeah, yeah uh, Doug will figure it out. And he'll get there eventually. And I, I still like what I'm seeing from him yep. um, being so new into this role and being fresh into it. Yep. Um, you know, I still, the last point I do want to make is we talked about the last podcast and I said, I want like a Jace Howard to get in Hunter space. Like somebody like, like Evan Turner came to you in Portland and be like, all right, what, what actions do you want to run? Well, we also need some, you know, a fire lit under guys' butts at times. And I still want to see more of that, connectiveness that way like pushing each other like they did it like talking to people uh, you know talking to coach washington about it and like yeah these guys really pushed each other because they're all competing for spots all the spots are open and that's what they love and now we're solidifying our spots and now we got to push each other in different ways like we got to get in each other's space about that help side like we got to you know you don't have to be screaming but i think that's where their next step of camaraderie and playing together that, like, like that's the next step they will take is to be able to like communicate as a team. I think yeah. there's, there's so many like lost pieces and you see it like defensively. I think it's mostly defensively where they need to come together. But when you're, you know, lost a little bit and trying to figure it all out, it's hard for you to motivate somebody else, a lot of fire under somebody else because you're like, you're making your own mistakes, but I don't know. It's uh it's a, it's not like a lack of desire that I'm saying. It's just like some energy that I want to see them feeding from each other. Because Hunter, I mean, we've seen it in past years. He can be very energetic and feed yeah. the energy of the game. And maybe the game is still down for him and he's not quite as uh, excitable because he's older and more experienced. But I, 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 I'm kind of waiting for it, right? I'm waiting for, I mean, I'm hoping for this Maryland game that, you know, like he had, uh, what was it, a couple years ago? 
was it last year? No, I think a couple of years ago, his freshman year. And where he got excited and it motivated him. Like, I want that, I want that hunter back. Like, I want that that kid and him to come back. And I think they're pressing right now so hard trying to figure out in the scramble, like they're still yet to unlock that part. But I don't I don't think they're they're too far off. Um but I mean, hey, Big Ten season, you, you gotta start winning games or you know, it doesn't matter how much progress you're making. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and, you know, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but, you know, with, with the preseason games, uh, or sorry, with the non-conference games kind of coming to an end, um, you know, my sophomore year, we had, a, you know, I think we were six and four in non-conference play and, you know, had some tough losses and fell out of the AP top 25. But we used the start of the Big Ten season as an opportunity to, kind of start over fresh like we're we're zero and zero kind of like let's let's lock in on a whole new season now and we became a new team and I think not that this the non-conference games have been horrible but they didn't have any good wins you know they yeah. they didn't have any wins that they can kind of come come tournament time they can't really use any of those wins and say this was you know our defining non-conference win like they they just haven't had that. So coming into Big Ten season, it's like, look, you got a whole new opportunity now. You're going to be playing against good teams night in, night out. And for me, the one thing moving forward is is just find a consistent coverage that you're going to go to on the ball screen defense. Yeah. And and even if it's not working, like just be decisive. You mentioned be, on offense, be decisive. Be decisive. Even if you're going to make a de- mistake, yeah. be decisive with it and have everyone be on the same page and it'll work out. Like you'll figure out a way to work it out. But the the hesitations and the the miscommunications on defense, like that's that's got to come to an end. Like that's the one thing that I think they really need to lock in on, um, you know, as, as these non-conference games come to an end. Yeah, well, let's talk about that. Let's get into our scatter report segment of the show. Let's look forward to Central Michigan and Maryland. We'll talk a little bit about what we want to see from them. Because I think ultimately, you know, it, it comes down to Michigan, no matter who is in front of them. Like, it, it's yeah. about what they're doing. So the scatter yeah. report is huge, player basis, but it does come down to them. You know, Central Michigan right now is 4-8. and eight. They mm-hmm. are without their best player. Still going to be, I think, without their best player. Um, now I think we're, we're, we're recording this the day of the game. So we're, you know, we're not sure exactly what's going to happen, but again, that's, I mean, again, like you say, that should be a, just a win, just win, be solid. And, and let's look forward to Maryland. I mean, I don't, I don't, you know, four and eight, they lost four in a row. They have done all their best player. I mean, wh- you just got to win. Again. Yeah. You always say and not, only, not only win, but it's, it's, it's gotta be one of those games. Like we talked about it's like, put them away in the first half. And use yeah. the use the second half as an opportunity to, even if it's test out different coverages on ball screens. And, you know, if you're up 30, 40 points, I mean, you're not saying that it has to be a 30, 40 point win, but if you have a comfortable lead against a team like that, that's the opportunity to try new things and, and kind of iron out those wrinkles that you have. And again, they, they're not going to have many more opportunities to do this. Come Big Ten play, you know, you're not going to have many nights where, you know, you have an opportunity to go up 20, 30 points against the team and put them away early because um, right. Big Ten, it's a dogfight night in, night out. So, you know, I would really love to see them use this as an opportunity to, to iron these things out and, and just get a consistent coverage and then lock in on that. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, over the break, I don't know how much they've been practicing, but I'm sure in practice, that's it's probably what they've been working on. So yeah, hopefully with this time, you know, come some improvement in that area yeah those those haven't been light practices i would say to say Absolutely. those have been some grueling drill practices working on this ball screen stuff um you know but that like you said that it's now big 10 season and you get in conference play and you don't know what game is going to be a good win when you get in there like maryland's beat illinois already when they're ranked 16 and, you know, they've, they've lost a close game to Tennessee by three. They got blown out by UCLA. It was ranked 16th at the time then. So, like, but you don't know what they – Maryland could, you know, end up winning, end up, you know, fifth in the Big Ten, have some big wins and be in close to the top 25, not being a good win on your resume. You just have no idea. So you got to come prepared, like, from the very start. 
Now, that being said, I have started before horrible in the Big Ten and we turned it around, but you know, that's not always the likely case. You want a strong start. And this yeah. this break that they've had from December twenty first since the UNC game for that long stretch, I think is is good for them. You know, it's not it's not quite like football, you know, you take two weeks off and you know guys get out of a headspace like this now they're really they're getting into a headspace yeah really focused in for this central michigan game and then they need to carry that over to maryland but i i I, you know we can talk about maryland all we want but again it's we've said it now 20 times on this episode it's just going to be how they defend Mm -hmm. and then keep keep building on that offense i think you know your average 70 five in the big 10 that that can win them a lot of games and they're very capable of that it's just going to be what they do defensively and how in tune they are like they could be running their wrong coverage against the player maryland let's say a guy's a shooter and they like accidentally go under well it doesn't matter if you actually recover and everyone recovers and not everyone stays connected so like yes the coverages matter and and what their game plan is but if they can be connected and always in tune at all times, like you, you know it, it. All it takes is a foot, you know, one step of a mistake mm-hmm. on a rotation, and then you're giving up a layup. So it's, uh, you know, I'm not really worried about other teams as much as I am worried about the Michigan development defensively. And I think that's we're going to be talking about that for the next few months. I think for the rest of the season, that's going to be our main main topic, unless unless something drastically changes there. No, I agree. I agree. It's they're they're their own worst enemy in a lot of ways, but again, they've shown us they've shown us enough positives o- over the the last two months where you know they have it within them, and you eliminate some of the the hesitation on the defensive end, some of the yeah. lack of communication. Um, you eliminate some of that, and this this all of a sudden becomes a pretty good team. You know, I'm not going to say they're you know top two, top three in the country, anything like that. But this is a team that can beat anyone at any time with the personnel that they currently have. Um, So again, it's, we've said it, it's, it's right there, but there's, there's the fine tuning of the small details that really is important at this time. And hopefully they've used this, this break as an opportunity kind of reset, recharge, and again, the beauty of it is with guys fighting for for minutes, I'm sure those practices, like you said, have been some dog fights, you know, guys competing and going at it. And that's how you get better. You have to push one each other on a day to day basis to get better. So I hope that they've been doing that. I guess we'll see. Um, we'll see tonight against Central Michigan. Yep. How they uh, how they look. And, um, you know, hopefully they hopefully they head into the new year with some good momentum. Yep. That's that's the hope, at least. Yep. Keep making Steps forward. It's all you can ask for. Just steps forward. If, even if it's one more possession, a better defense each game, you know, that'll add up at the end of the year. So it'll be interesting to see what, what they do there. Um, I want to get to our word on campus segment now. And this is an easy one this week. We got Michigan football. That's all anyone cares about. I mean, Michigan basketball, you know, Michigan loves the basketball team. But right now it's just all football. And I'm going to come out just straight away. I think I think we win big against TCU. I don't like TCU. I don't I don't understand it. Now I'm I'm a little biased watching their Kansas State game in the Big 12 championship, yeah. but I just don't think I think they just had a string of luck. And yeah. I'm gonna be cocky here. I'm gonna give like a, a hunter cocky prediction that like we're gonna dominate them. I don't I don't see how we don't. I would I would love to see that. And more than anything, uh, I would love to see a Michigan Ohio State final game we, we, my, because i'm worried about that if that happens no, no, no. i would absolutely love that oh i would love that oh man literally no i think 80 percent of michigan fans don't want to see ohio state in in the title game because i mean being teams twice first of all in one right. season is tough enough uh basketball or football and but if you lose to ohio state the stakes are too high if you lose to ohio state in the championship game i mean how how long until you can redeem that like you yeah. can't like that'll always be hanging over your heads and then that'll be them and they'll just they'll have, like michigan is about to quit the internet yeah i'm a glass half full guy what if you win though <laughs> yeah but i know like i'm seeing people talk i i'm with you i'm with you but like i think the talk around town is like 
please Georgia win. Like, I, because Ohio State's so motivated. But yeah, I think that would be unbelievable. They could beat Ohio State in a national championship game. I mean, one program over the other, like kind of be one of the most biggest trash talking programs, um, rivalries like across the country. What was the game? It was, uh, it was the most watched football game on Fox or was it just college football? Something outrageous. Like people love Ohio State, Michigan. Like that game is oh, yeah. in another stratosphere. I, yeah. Again, if you meet, if those two teams meet up in the national championship, that it's, Again, it's one of those games where, like, it goes down in that school's history. I mean, anytime you're playing a national championship, it goes in the school's history. But, like, that's a different level of – that game just has meaning on so many different levels. It's a national championship, and then it's that pride of the rivalry, which, again, you can you can put it right up there with the Duke UNCs. You can put it – you can put it right next to any college rivalry. It is right there. Um, so – Again, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I agree with you. I think TCU is is easy work. I think we're going to handle business. Um, whether we play Georgia or 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 Ohio State, it's it's going to be a tough game. But I just the way we handled Ohio State, you know, well, at their place in that second half, I'm just I don't know. I'm just feeling like I'm just feeling like it's our time to shine. It's our year. Yeah, and we. we I can't remember the last time we beat Ohio State too. That's the thing. It's been like I feel like ever since I got to Michigan in 2012, I haven't seen them beat Ohio State. It's every single year we get popped, and then finally this year we pulled through. And I'm like, all right, this is it. This is it's our year. No, it, and I think last year too. I think it's two years ago. So I think oh, it's sorry, nice. sorry, last yeah. year as well. So it's like I mean, total yeah. meltdown on the Ohio State side. But shout out Ernest in the chat saying that was the most the Ohio State Michigan game this year was. Most watched football game, non Super Bowl on Fox ever. Wow. Which is, wow. I mean, wild. I, I think that would be, it would be the most amazing national championship game in terms of like viewership. Uh, I still think Georgia is, is just, you know, when they want to be or when they're at top go, like they're far and away above everybody else, like just on yeah. all cylinders. Um, but I, I think it will be fun. I think Donovan Edwards has been just an absolute stud. We talk about, you know, rotations in basketball, like these guys, you know, playing more minutes and, you know, needing to get some subs and some rest and balancing aggressiveness. And Donovan Edwards now just alone in the backfield by himself, just absolutely dominating football games. They have a, what was a cornerback is like now the backup running back base. Like Donovan's just a workhorse. So shout out to him. I don't know how he does it. Like kid will just rip off an 80 yard run or a 50 yard run and turn around and have to run all the next running plays all in a row. Like hardball is like, Oh yeah, we don't need to like give him a rest with like a play action. Like, no, we're going to give him the ball again after you just sprinted for 50 yards. So he's been impressive. The whole team has been impressed. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be tuned in for sure, but uh, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about Michigan's chances. I think this is last year. I thought, you know, the other teams were just far away better and it just wasn't going to be there this year i i I think it's uh i think everybody has that feeling like okay we're now it's time we we have a chance take your uh take your 30 bucks from the casino (laughs) put it on michigan baby (laughs) money line or 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 uh spread what are we thinking here good question whatever whatever your heart desires whatever you're feeling that day i've never bet on sports before so i don't even really know how i don't even know how that works wrong with you I, I do I don't bet on sports. Actually, I just, what I should be saying is what is wrong with me? You're you're smart for not doing that. That's I do like I do like roulette and blackjack. I do like going to casinos. I just don't bet on sports. Never got into it. Well, good. Don't. It's just a total crapshoot and you'll just lose yeah. your money. You'll you'll win and then you'll think you're a genius, god level brain, and then you're then you'll just lose like forty bets in a row and you're like yeah. a monkey, a blind monkey could pick a game better than me. Yeah, I don't know what the spread is on this, but I do want to shout out. Speaking of betting, shout out Joey Baker for that last meeting is three. The game against USC hitting the over for me because I thought it was going to be an offensive show. It really wasn't quite what I thought. But shout out to Joey. We didn't get into Joey this episode, but we'll we'll talk more about him. I we I think you and me think we should be, should be playing a little more, um, and how he kind of melds with the other guys i think it's perfect i think he he showed a little bit of that last game but we'll you know that'll be hopefully we'll we'll stay on the lookout for that for future episodes we'll see what happens in the maryland game uh definitely because that'll be a good test central michigan you don't know some is you know in, in terms of like rotations could be blow in the first half you can't really look at what a true game would be like with with guys yeah. in their minutes so we'll be back um 
looking to add, after the Central Michigan game tonight and the Maryland game, we'll be back to break those down and then look forward to the next two games after that. Um, so stay tuned. This was a lot of fun, Nick. I, I always love these episodes with you. I think, I think we're, we're, we're tuned in and we still believe. And I think some people are losing hope a little bit. I've seen it yeah, on Twitter. Some people are losing hope, but I think you and me still believe. No, you, we, we, again, we're, we're basketball dweebs over here and we see as many negatives as are, we see the positives and those positives keep us hopeful. You see those little signs of hope where you're like, they, they have it in them. It's the frustrating part of it because you know they have it in them. But again, I'm still hopeful this team can pull it together and string together some good wins in the and throughout their Big Ten schedule. And again, hopefully tournament time. This team has been great in the tournament the last, you know, five, six years. So hopefully, hopefully they can make another run this year. Yep. Not giving up yet. Yep. Yep. And if you're watching the games, I know sports is uh it's easy to watch. You know, as a results oriented fan, but if you can try to track the progress, track the improvements of how they're playing defensively, and you know that might make you a little more positive here and there because we've seen it offensively. Uh, we, we've asked for some things and they they come through. You know, guys have come through in that way. So I, I think it's it's a, a a progress. I know it's results based. They got to start winning games, but if you can try and watch these guys with a little bit of a different lens, I think you'll see a little different side of things. So. It'll be fun. We'll be back. We'll, we'll evaluate those. We'll break into those games. And particularly defensively, where I'm going to be tuned in fully and taking notes, watching these games, seeing how they play defensively on the ball screen defense and, and their rotations and help side. But we'll be back. We appreciate all you listening. Um, you guys are great. Uh, you know, send us your questions, um, whatever they may be, basketball or non-related. But we'll be here for the rest of this season. Appreciate you. Till next time, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>